My name is Jeff Cross, and this is Straight Talk. Today, I want to share with you an important topic from a presentation by Debbie Sardone, the founder of Cleaning for a Reason, an ISSA charity program. What you're about to see might bring a tear to your eye. It may create an urge to help others. It might just motivate you to join a growing movement to help the cleaning industry help cancer patients who need your help. Motivation can come from various sources. For Debbie, you will see it was Tyler Perry, the comedian, the actor. The thing is, Tyler Perry didn't know he helped, but he did. His actions meant something. So here is the story. Enjoy it. And after watching, please share this video with others. Collectively, we can bring some measure of comfort and care to those who are fighting the battle against cancer. How many of you have ever gotten a giving urge? And I'll tell you what I mean by a giving urge. This is where you see somebody may, might seem a little down and out. Maybe you're at a restaurant and you're like, you know what? I had to just tell the waiter, give me their check, right? Or you're in line getting fast food at the fast food window and you're like, you know, I heard somebody else do this one time and I, I want to pay for the, the guy, the car behind me, right? And then you're like, what if they got 10 kids in the back seat and I can't see them? <laughs> right? And they all like big, big drinks, you know? And so we've all, how many of you have had giving urges where you're like, I gotta do that. I gotta do that, right? How many of us, be honest, ignore our giving urges sometimes, right? I've sat at a table, I've seen a young couple, my husband and I, we've been married forever, and I've seen a young couple celebrating something. You can tell they don't have a lot of money and it's probably their first anniversary. And it's like, we should send them a bottle of champagne, right? And then you're like, eh, I feel kind of stupid, right? I mean, you do, you feel a little awkward or you wanna go help that lady who's struggling to get her groceries into the car and then you just feel a little awkward and you don't, right? It's nothing major. It's not like if they were dying and you said, no, I feel awkward, I'm not going to help them. But there's little stuff where we have a giving urge and we don't, right? And here's the problem with ignoring a giving urge. It takes oftentimes five seconds or 10 bucks. Like you can tell a waitress is having a bad day and you buy a cup of coffee and you felt like giving her a $10 tip and then you didn't, right? For 10 bucks, you can have lifelong good feeling of what you just did for the rest of your life. Or to save the 10 bucks, you can remember that in your mind over and over and over again, as I have done so many times, going, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I do that? I could have done that, right? That's exactly what happened to me when the idea of cleaning for a reason became a thing. I'd had other giving urges, in the past, sometimes I fulfill them, especially if it's cheap. <laughs> sometimes I don't, and I talk myself out of it for various reasons. I don't have time, I don't have the money, whatever. And Cleaning for Reasons started because I made a decision to stop ignoring giving urges. And I took a phone call from a woman who wanted a quote to have her house clean, and I gave her a price, just like you do when you're in business mode, and she said, oh, I can't really afford that right now. I'm going through chemotherapy and radiation and I'm not working. And she said, so I'll call you when I get back to work and I can afford your service. And I said, okay, no problem. You know, best of luck to you. Hung up the phone and I had a giving urge. And I was like, why did I not give her that cleaning? My business is doing well over a million dollars. I can afford to give this woman a free cleaning. Why didn't I do it? I never thought of it, to be honest with you. And I might have talked myself out of it if I hadn't, have, because then it's like, well, is she really sick? <laughs> you know, or is she just going to take advantage of me after this? Is she going to tell all her friends that I clean for free and now I'm going to regret it? Right. You know, you, you talk yourself out of things and you rationalize. But that day I said, you know what? I need to give in to my giving urges. And I met with my staff that day and I said, guys, <laughs> actually girls, gals, every one of my office staff is female. And uh, whew, the estrogen, oh my gosh, 
You know what I'm talking about. All the women laughed. And all the guys are like, I'm not allowed to laugh. <laughs> I digress. Um, I said to my staff that day, if a woman calls our office and she is battling cancer and cannot afford the service, give it to her for free. It is now a company policy because I wasn't there most of the time. I don't need somebody saying, well, I didn't know what to do because you weren't here. I said, that is now a company policy. So cleaning for reasons started as a company policy, right? It started because I had a giving urge and I never dreamed with that policy. I never dreamed what could actually come of, of fulfilling a giving urge. So I'm driving down the highway, heading to my office, and I'm listening to the radio, and I already have this mentality, don't ignore giving urges, and the radio hosts were talking about Tyler Perry and how he went to Walmart, and he paid off $30,000 in layaways. Just nobody knew. And right around Christmas time, it was like early December or late November. People have stuff on lay. I was like, I didn't even know people did layaway anymore. I thought if you couldn't afford something, you put it on credit, right? And then pray till the end of the month that you have money to pay it off. I got a giving urge. I was like, you know, I'm 30 minutes ahead of schedule. I don't have to be at my office for 30 minutes. Walmart is right there at the exit when I get off here in about two minutes. I pulled in. I saw how long this stupid parking lot is and how it would take me 30 minutes just to get in the front door. And I almost talked myself out of it. And I said, you know what? Now, I'm not Tyler Perry. I don't have $30,000 to go pay off a whole bunch of layaways, but I had a certain number in my head. And there was a risk that I would talk myself into lowering that number by the time I found that layaway department because I didn't even know they had one. And I go in, I'm like, where's the layaway? And they're like, it's all the way in the very back, far left, electronics. I'm like, oh, geez. So I go to the back, and there's a sign that says, layaway opens at 10 a.m. I'm like, what? A Walmart opens at like 6 a.m. and closes at 2 a.m. So, you know, a Walmart's open more than the bars are. And I'm like, okay, that's a perfect excuse for me to talk myself out of paying off those layaways and saving myself some money because now that the emotion has died down, I got things to do. I'm a busy woman and I don't have time to walk around Walmart for 30 minutes because you know what's going to happen. You walk around Walmart for 30 minutes. Yes, I spent about $250 on stuff I do not need, but I had to have it in the moment while I was killing 30 minutes of time. So I did not talk myself out of the urge. I went to the back. At 10 o'clock with this wagon full of stuff <laughs> that I don't need and I said do you know about the Tyler Perry uh, challenge and, and how he pays off layaways and she's like no I don't know what you're talking about I said well I want to pay off some layaways and she said well what's your layaway number I said no 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 my, not my layaways I buy stuff on credit but I was like, not my layaways. I want to pay off some layaways of some people that are in your system. She's like, let me get a supervisor. So she goes to the back and she gets a supervisor and she comes up and she's talking to me and she's like, I've never heard of this. And so she's like, let me go get my manager. So she goes to the back and she comes up with a third person and she's like, oh, yeah, there's a button right here. It's called Good Samaritan. I was like, oh, that's a thing. She said, yeah, it's Good Samaritan. She said, now, by the way, make sure you don't pay off a layaway 100% because then the system will say it's been purchased and they won't be able to find it. She said, leave $1 on it. I'm like, okay. I was like, good tip. Because she said, you know, if somebody came in and paid off layaway, so I'm sure that was all handled correctly with Tyler Perry, but if it wasn't, mine was. And so I started saying, let's pay off some layaway. She's like, you know, ringing it up, giving them my credit card. She's like, that's great, awesome. I said, no, let's do another one. Right. You know, I kept going and kept going. They were like, wow. And then another person came and then they were all standing around. And it's like, when we finally hit my number that was in my head, I said, well, let's find some more. And then they started digging around in the system. They're like, oh, look at this one. This one has baby formula and baby clothes. I said, pay that one off too. And then pay that one off too. By the time we finished, I had paid off my number of layaways we were all three crying. We were all three crying. Exactly. So I went back to my office and I told my staff what I did. And I said, and I had a giving urge. 
And I said, imagine if all of our employees could experience this. What if our employees could experience how it feels to help another human being who's not going to help you in the least? And I said, now they can't afford this, but I can. So I went to the bank and I pulled out a bunch of cash and we texted all of our employees and we said, come by, we have $100 cash. We have a service project if you'd like to participate. Only half of our employees came by. But the ones that did came back with stories that said, this is the most rewarding thing they have ever done in their life. We gave them a hundred bucks. We said, go find a Walmart and pay off somebody's layaway. They're like, what? And I had to explain the whole thing, leave a dollar, the whole thing. <laughs> we had one employee who came back and said, she's in fact, our company-wide banquet was the next day, the next evening. So she came up on stage and, and shared her story. She said she went to pay off a layaway and they had so many of them that had been paid off. They were like, I'm not sure if we have very many left. And so they were trying to find something that could be paid off within a hundred bucks and they found one, said $80. Uh, no, I'm sorry, they couldn't find one that was below a hundred, right? Because everybody had gone in and paid off the lower level ones. And so at that time, a young man steps up and they're trying to find one for her to pay off with her hundred dollars. And Deborah, how many of you know Deborah from Speed Cleaning Office? She runs the Speed Cleaning Office, right? So Deborah, she was like, well, you know, while they're looking, you, you go ahead of me. So this young man steps up, obviously, to pay on his layaway. And he's, he's saying something. And Deborah said, Can I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but are, are you trying to pay off your layaway? He said, no, I, I can't. I can't make any more payments, so I'm not going to be able to get it out by Christmas. He said, so I'm just coming to get my refund and forget it. And she said, I, I have 100 bucks to help you pay. And he looked at her like, you're crazy. And then the lady said, yeah, yeah, we've been doing this all day. Yeah, let her. So <laughs> she pays off his layaway. He hugs her. And the woman comes from the back with cookware. This is like a 17-year-old young man with cookware on layaway. Most of us can buy cookware if we need it for our Christmas dinner. And Deborah said, what were you going to do with this cookware? He said, I bought it for my family to make Christmas dinner in. Deborah's crying. The cashier is crying. The young man is crying. They will never forget this experience. What I'm trying to express to you is each of you have a story. Each of you have a known for, and it's probably much bigger in customer service, quality, technology, online reviews. It is probably much bigger. I want to be known as the most giving company in America. That's what I want. I want to be known for that. I want to be known as the most giving company in my community. So number one, build your brand promise around who you are, not what you do. Who are you? Honestly, I've never seen a Tyler Perry movie. I've never seen his old comedy show that made him famous. I've never seen it. But I love that guy. I love that guy. To me, he's the male Oprah. I just love him. And I don't know him. I have never met him. I've never watched a movie. I might not like it. But I love Tyler Perry. Why? Because of his known for. He is known as a giver. Who are you? Build your brand around what you're known for.